Good morning once again. Well, let's thank the band. Music's great. Way to go, guys. We appreciate y'all so much. You know, we this morning we finally got back on uh, Facebook. Our Facebook page is live now, running. We had a little hiccup in that. I think some gremlins got into it or something, but uh, it's good having everybody back. If you do view us on today on Facebook or you watch us on YouTube, uh, welcome. Uh, we'd like to say if you're out there watching us, for sure, if you get an opportunity, you're in our area, come by and visit. You'll meet some of the friendliest and welcoming people you ever met right here at JRC. So, Well, I had a realization this week after watching a show about Texas. There was a show out that talked about Texas and some of the cultures and some of the things with Texas. And I got that opportunity to watch it. And I realized this week that true Texans are in a class of their own. They have their own accent, their own language, and sayings that just make them unique. You know, if you ever really listen to one, listen to my wife talk or anybody like that, you will understand what a true Texan sounds like. And I'm not sure if it's just a Texas thing or if it's just a thing here in the South, but did you know you can say just almost anything about a person as long as you say, bless their heart. I, I, once again, I don't know if that's just Texas or that's the South. You know, such things as, look at that ugly baby. Bless its heart. Did you see that lady's tacky outfit? Bless her heart. Mark is not real smart. Bless his heart. Wait a minute. I know there are several Marks right here in this church, and I was not talking about any of you. But if you think I was, bless your heart. <laughs> Texas has its own thing going on. Sometimes we can find ourselves being very judgmental of other people, which is not Christ-like at all. Some people, even though they profess to be Christians, they treat people like they are more righteous than others. We can find ourselves right there real easy where we look around and we can find fault everywhere. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. We're going to start right there this morning. If you join me there. I always say, I pray you have your Bible with you. I'd rather you take a look at God's Word. Don't take my word for it. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 3. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. Selfish people, conceited people, can tend to find problems with other people and they can become judgmental. But the question this morning is, when you look in a full-length mirror, what do you see? Well, most of us, I know, have um, mirrors in our bathrooms at homes. You may have them in your bedrooms, on the walls, on the doors, dressing rooms, whatever. But we have mirrors, and usually the first time we see ourselves each morning is in that mirror and I know sometimes when we look in that mirror first thing in the morning it's pretty scary amen <laughs> you know when your eyes are just barely open and us guys that have hair it's sticking out every direction we're just not at our best when we get up in the morning. Some of you may be. My wife, she gets up all fired up, cheery, jumping around like it's a great day. And I'm saying, close the door, turn off the light, and leave me alone. <laughs> Some people have that, but many of us don't. For many of us, facing our mirrors first thing in the morning can be an unpleasant experience. 
One thing for sure you can count on, mirrors are very honest. They don't hide things from us at all. They don't gloss over our own defects and problems. In fact, the better the mirror, the more flaws we can see. Have you ever seen them makeup mirrors with all them bright lights around it? And it's like, oh, I didn't know I looked that bad. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, it, it reveals everything about you when you look into it. And I guess one of the questions is, if that's the case, why do we have mirrors at all? Why would we want a mirror? Why would we want to look into a mirror? Well, because out, without mirrors, we'd never look at ourselves and make some of the major adjustments to some things that the rest of the world's about to see each morning. We do need to make some adjustments there. We look into our mirrors so we can face the truth and make the changes we think are necessary to make ourselves more presentable to the rest of the world. That's how important a mirror is. Mirrors always tell the truth, even if we don't like what we see. Mirrors reveal the person we really are when we look in it. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. If we could go there this morning. I promised everybody I'd slow down. Last week they said I went too fast. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. Give everybody time to get there. That way you won't need your phone as much. (laughs) I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to talk about that for a minute. You know, I know some of you use your phone as your Bible to get to the scriptures really quick and, that, and that's okay I want you to do whatever you got to do to get there and follow with me but there's nothing nothing like holding God's word in your hand so I encourage you if you're going to use your phone for the scriptures to find them go in the Bible and find them also nothing like it at all So Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 3. The apostle Paul speaking right here. He says, For the the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Remember old Max Davis, she sing a song called It's Hard to Be Humble. And that's true. You know, uh, sometimes we need to humble ourselves and face the fact that You know, we stop thinking about ourselves as being better than someone else or above someone else. I'm pleased to say here in the church, we uh, like to say we enforce that. Uh, We're all want to be on the same page. I say when we get to heaven, we're all going to be equal, so why can't we be equal here? You know, no one should look down on one another. Uh, I know I'm the pastor and the shepherd of the church, but I'm no better than you. And as long as we keep that focus, it makes a family stay together better and it pleases God. Amen? Some people will tell us to just be ourselves. But that's not totally a correct suggestion at all. Just be yourself. Well, in some ways we should. But don't be yourself. Be like Christ. That's a better deal. Amen? And not all people are who they say they are. You know, some people claimed all this stuff and they put on a really good show, but they're not really who they say they are. I read a story about a man who was looking for a job and he noticed that there was an opening at the local zoo. He inquired about the job and discovered that the zoo had a very unusual position that they wanted to fill. Apparently, their gorilla had died. And until they could get a new one, they needed someone to dress up in a gorilla suit and act like a gorilla for a few days. He was just to sit, eat, and sleep. His identity would be kept a secret, of course. Thanks to a very fine gorilla suit, no one would be the wiser. The zoo offered good pay for this job, so the man decided to do it. He tried on the suit, and sure enough, he looked just like a gorilla. They led him to a cage, He took a position at the back of the cage and pretended to sleep. But after a while, he got tired of sitting, so he walked around a little bit, jumped up and down, and tried a few gorilla noises. The people who were watching him seemed to really like that. 
When he would move or jump around, they would clap and cheer and throw him peanuts. And the man loved peanuts. So he jumped around some more and he tried climbing a tree and that seemed to really get the crowd excited. They threw more peanuts. Playing to the crowd, he grabbed a vine and swung from side to side of the cage to the other. The people loved it and they threw more peanuts. Wow, this is great, he thought. He swung higher and the crowd grew bigger. He continued to swing on the vine, getting higher and higher, and then all of a sudden, the vine broke. He swung up and out of the cage, landing in the lion's cage that was next door. He panicked. There was a huge lion not 20 feet away, and it looked very hungry. So the man in the gorilla suit started jumping up and down, screaming and yelling, Help, help, get me out of here. I'm not really a gorilla. I'm a man in a gorilla suit. Help. The lion quickly pounced on the man, held him down and said, Will you shut up? You're going to get us both fired. <laughs> some, some people aren't really who they say they are. Amen. Are we being the Christians that we say we are? If we are being like Christ then we would not find ourselves being judgmental about others. Once again, what do we see when we look into the mirror? Who really are we? Country music singer Blake Shelton sang a song that asked, Who are you when I'm not looking? Great question. Who are we when no one's looking? I can share this with you. Are we being the Christian God expects us to be when no one's looking? And for sure, God's always looking. Amen? So we don't get away with that. So who are we when no one's looking? Are we still what God expects us to be? People that find faults and judge others normally do so to cover up their own sins and shortcomings in their lives. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Do not judge. And sometimes we find ourselves doing that a little bit. You know, we say, well, we're just holding them accountable. <laughs> not always. There's a difference between accountability and judgment. You know, when God's the only judge, everything's going to be judged by him one way or another at the end, right? So we need to be very careful. That's a fine line. And once again, when we judge people, we really don't maybe know that person or know what's going on in their lives. There are a lot of behind-the-scenes things that may be going on there. You know, some people get themselves in positions that, that may not be real comfortable for them. And it may have taken them a long time to get there. But when they walk in the back doors here of this church and they get to hear God's word and around all these friendly and welcoming people, they'll start that change one little bit at a time that they may have going on in their life. It's not for us to go and judge them on that. Amen? Amen. I remember this story. It never went away. Um, when we were just getting started, I, I, over at the next door over here when we are in a smaller church, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of people coming, but we were getting a lot of new people to come in to Cowboy Church, and I was new. I was new being a, a pastor, but I have compassion for anybody, and, and I believe I, I look for the best in everybody. And I had a lady come up to me one morning and said, you know, did you see what was on that man's shirt that was sitting in front of me? And I said, no, I really didn't. And it was a young man, you know, he, he, he was probably in his 20s or something like that, but he was in church, right? 
And she was sitting right behind him. So I went over and looked before he left. And on the back of his shirt, it said, Hold my beer while I kiss your girlfriend. (laughs) And this lady, she was upset about that. And I said, well, there are two ways we can handle that. First of all, he's here. And the more he learns about God and God's word and things, maybe one step at a time we'll plant a seed and they'll start a change there. And I said, in the meantime, we have some openings up on the front row right up here. And you're welcome to come on up here and you won't have to look at anybody in front of you, right? Now, is that politically correct? Maybe not. But it's the truth. And, you know, as that young man continued to come, we did see improvements. And that's what God wants us to do. That's why we're we're supposed to be the example. And not be the example by condemning or judging somebody, but encouraging them to follow God's word. And the more we're around like-minded people, Christians, the better that walk gets and the more understanding comes out of God's word. And this scripture right here that fits that situation entirely, and I mean it applies to all of us. Go with me. We're going to Matthew. You're already in 7. Go to chapter, uh, verse 3. Matthew chapter 7, begin at verse 3. He says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see, you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Rather, right here, this is Jesus' own words. Jesus speaking right here. And he is saying to us, why not? Why do you open your eyes to any fault of your brother or sister? Why are you looking at that while you yourself are guilty of a much greater fault? First of all, they all have faults. But one of the faults right here is judgmental. Amen? Sometimes we can find fault in everybody else and miss our own. And that's what Jesus is trying to say here. Be sure you don't have that plank in your own eye before you go trying to take a speck out of somebody else's. He warns us about that. And have you ever realized that when we read the Bible or we hear a sermon, we are supposed to see ourselves in it? Some people miss that, and that's true. We should see ourselves when we read the Bible or we hear a sermon. But that's not the way it always works. Sometimes we hear a sermon and we think, man, I wish so-and-so could hear this. They really need it. Don't we do that? Come on. The thing about that is God in his great power didn't see fit to make sure so-and-so was here today. But he placed you here today. Amen? So maybe the message isn't really for so-and-so. Maybe the message is for you. Amen? So we have to be careful with the way we say things and the way we look at things. Maybe your heart's right, but the mind's not right. It's all over the place, right? Sometimes we need to think about that a little bit. One of the major reasons for us to read, study, and understand the scriptures in the Bible is so we can see the dirt on our own faces and the planks in our own eyes. Because that's what the scriptures does. It reveals it to us. Maybe that's why some people don't want to read the Bible. Because it's too eye-opening for them. If we never realize that we have dirt on our faces or a plank in our own eye, we will never attempt to get rid of them. Never attempt. First of all, you've got to know you've got a problem. Amen? James chapter 1, beginning at verse 21. Flip on over a little ways from Matthew toward the back of your Bible. You'll find James. James chapter 1, begin at verse 21. 
Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word. I'm going to say that again. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Man, that's pretty clear right there. Don't just hear the word. Do the word. Don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. Amen? How can anyone look in a mirror and forget what they look like? That's a good question. I think one thing is, is we don't believe the mirror is revealing the truth about us. We don't accept what we see. You know, at a carnival fun house, the mirrors are to design to make us look funny. You know, all different distorted shapes and all that. And these mirrors are not accurate or an accurate reflection of ourselves at all. And we know it. We know for a fact that's not us. And this makes it easy for us to walk away from these mirrors and forget what we look like because we don't trust them. No mirror that we ever look into that might allow us to know ourselves will ever show us more with clarity and accuracy than the mirror of the Word of God. Many of you probably remember the magic mirror from the story of Snow White. You know, it's where the evil queen would say to it every day, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? The queen kind of was, uh, she's a little arrogant, right? And she wants the mirror to proclaim that she's the fairest of them all because she was focused on being the most beautiful in the land. So she wanted the mirror to tell her even if it wasn't the truth. And one day he told her, told the truth, which she didn't like. And that's when she mentioned Snow White. I would say instead of that saying, I believe we all should be looking in our mirrors and saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, do you see Christ in me at all? Today, I would suggest that we all take a good, hard look in our own mirrors while making sure that mirror is not cracked or broken and incapable, incapable of revealing the truth. Because sometimes that's what we prefer. Let's all start using the Word of God found in the Bible. This is the one and only true mirror that reflects what we and our lives should look like. And we should all make sure the reflection we see in our mirrors are a reflection of Jesus Christ. I know sometimes we think we're helping others by telling them what's wrong with them. And there's some people we just want to go up and just strangle them. I mean, that's just the world today, amen? But that's not Christ-like. That's probably the hardest thing becoming a Christian and being like Christ is self-control and we all need it so today I would say to you if you see a brother or sister instead of judging them encourage them share God's word with them lead them in the way Christ would want us to be that example that might make them want to look into God's word and follow his will and his way amen let's pray Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, we are just so thankful. Thankful for the blessings and favor you continue to pour out here in your church house on this church family. Father, I thank you for this family. This family of brothers and sisters that are just, they're just on a path toward you each and every day. We thank you for their hearts and their love for you. And Father, we thank you for your presence felt here this morning just fills this building. Father, your love, your grace, and your mercy that you pour out on us when we know we don't deserve it. And Father, this morning I pray that we stop being judgmental if we are. 
start looking at things of how we can help others improve their walk and their way that you would want them to go. Father, let us be the example. Let us be that shining light where you shine through us to them. And Father, let's show them the love and the grace and the mercy that you show upon us. Father, we love you. We praise you. I pray this morning everything we did, everything we said was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.